Hello everybody and welcome to Theology 101. Today we are going to talk about a specific angel called the angel of the Lord. If you remember, an angel is literally a messenger of God. But there is one angel in the Bible called the angel of the Lord who appears to have more power than a typical angel. What we will see is that the angel of the Lord is the only angel who refers to himself as God in the first person while other angels refers to God in the third person. So theologians have said that the angel of the Lord is the pre-incarnate Christ, referring to Jesus before he became a man. Therefore, whenever the phrase angel of the Lord appears in the Old Testament, usually we are seeing a picture of Jesus himself. Let me show you the times that the angel of the Lord appears and how he is different than a typical angel. He appears to Hagar after she runs away from Sarah, Abraham's wife. The angel of the Lord speaks to Hagar and tells her to return to Sarah and to assure her that everything will be okay, he says this, The angel of the Lord also said to her, I will surely multiply your offspring so that they cannot be numbered for multitude. Notice a pronoun the angel of the Lord uses. He did not say that God will multiply her offspring, but I will do it. In fact, Notice how Hagar responds to the angel of the Lord. So she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her, You are a God of seeing, for she said, Truly here I have seen him who looks after me. We see the angel of the Lord appear to Gideon. God calls Gideon to fight the Midianites, but Gideon is afraid. But notice who specifically talks to Gideon and how Gideon responds to him. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, O mighty man of valor. And Gideon said to him, Please, my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his wonderful deeds that our fathers recounted to us, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord had forsaken us and given us into the hand of Midian. And the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours and save Israel from the hand of Midian. Do not I send you? Notice how the angel of the Lord is a messenger on behalf of God and tells Gideon that the Lord is with him. Gideon objects and says that God is not with Israel the same way he was with them back in the Exodus story. Then the angel of the Lord responds to Gideon, but notice what the author writes, and the Lord turned to him. The author identified the angel of the Lord as the Lord. Now, Gideon still does not believe that God will be with him. So he asks the angel of the Lord to show him a sign if he has found favor in God's eyes. Gideon prepares food for the angel of the Lord. Then we see the angel of the Lord use a staff in his hand and touches the food. Immediately, a fire comes out of a rock and consumes the meal. Then the angel of the Lord vanish. At this point, Gideon realized he has been talking to the angel of the Lord and he knows that nobody can see God and live. So he is now afraid for his life. Notice that it makes no difference to Gideon whether it was the angel of the Lord or God himself because Gideon reacts to the angel as if he were God. Now if you are still skeptical at this point, the apostle Paul seals the deal and explicitly explains how the angel of the Lord refers to Jesus. For I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that our fathers were all under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. In this passage, Paul refers to Israel's time in the wilderness when God provided water for them from a rock. Before this event, God had already delivered Israel from the Egyptian with the parting of the Red Sea and provided food for them called manna. While recounting these events, notice what Paul said. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. What is Paul saying here? How is Jesus the rock who followed Israel around? If you remember, the angel of the Lord appeared to Moses in a burning bush to commission Moses to return to Egypt to deliver Israel. Later, Moses delivered Israel from Egypt, and the angel of the Lord followed them around in the wilderness to guide them. Then the angel of God who was going before the host of Israel moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them. But the angel of the Lord did not just guide Israel, but also protected them. Look at what God said to Israel. Behold, I send an angel before you to guard you on the way and to bring you to the place that I have prepared. Pay careful attention to him and obey his voice. Do not rebel against him, for he will not pardon your transgression, for my name is in him. But if you carefully obey his voice and do all that I say, then I will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. So the angel of the Lord commissioned Moses to rescue Israel, guide Israel in the desert, and even protect them from their enemies. But how is the angel of the Lord connected with Jesus and why does the Apostle Paul call Jesus the rock? It is because Moses explicitly calls God the rock of Israel. Do you see how all the dots connect? Moses called God the rock, 
and Paul called Jesus the rock who followed Israel. But we see that a rock did not follow Israel, but the angel of the Lord did. So Paul is showing how the angel of the Lord refers to pre-incarnate Jesus and that Jesus is also the God of Israel who Moses calls the rock. And it is in this way that Jesus was the spiritual rock who followed Israel to guide and protect them. If you want to study more about this topic about Jesus being the angel of the Lord, I'll leave a link to a book in the description box below. If you missed the last video where we talked about angels, I'll leave a link here for you to watch. Until next time, see you!